Welcome back, Nick Line. This is Movie Review, episode 140. Yes, who knew I would get this far with a particular series? Yep, which means this series is even longer than even One Piece or even Baruto. Yep, right now this is my second longest series. And I've produced more videos for this series than any other series, aside from the comic corner I've done. Yep, this this particular review I'm reviewing was to put is the sequel to Ant-Man. And it's also the, well, overall, it's the third most recent film released. Yeah, released just last year. Yeah, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. This film is the 20th film released for the MCU. And this film is Ant-Man and the Wasp. Yep. In case you're wondering, they do bring back a lot of characters. Like, pretty much like all the characters from the movie. They had like a few, mostly... The new characters, they had one new good character, uh, and a few other characters in here. You have Paul Rudd back as Scott Lang. You have, as put said on the cover, eventually Lita becomes second Wasp in the movie. Yep. We also have the uh, we have the live-action debut of Jenny Von Dyne, played by Michelle Pfeiffer. Yep. Michael Douglas is back as Hank Pym. We have Paul. We have Ant-Man's crew from the previous movie. Yeah, they all they pretty much all return, and they're starting up a security company, which is probably a nod to the comic version of of Ant Man, where he actually did the same exact thing. You know, starting a security company. Though they're called Ant Man Solutions, it's a different Ant movie. They also introduce a few new characters in the movie, aside from the course the Wasp. Well, technically his first actor here. We have Sunday Birch, a seedless Iron Man villain. Yep, make him a Film for Ant Man for some reason. Okay, we also have the live action debut of Bill Foster, the ex husband of Claire Temple. Though there's no connection between her and Claire Temple from the Netflix shows. Yeah, there's no mention of it at all because, well, movies. God forbid they ever mention stuff outside of their own damn movies. Well, they have reference Agent Carter because what happened next? We'll talk about that soon. I'll talk about that in my Two videos from now, I'll talk about Endgame. Yep, and we also see live action view of Ghost. Yes, I've even talked to Bob Layton about this particular character. He actually loves this version of Ghost. He even likes. He even. She even. He even says she smelled really good when he got a chance to meet him. Apparently, this is what he told me. Apparently, she, the actress who plays her in the movie, and her name is what is her name? The actress who plays the Ghost. Hannah John Kerman. Yes. This woman. Yeah. Where, believe it or not, this woman is the daughter of Egghead. Yes. Egghead. <laughs> you probably thinking, Egghead. Isn't that like the villain that was played by Vincent Price in the Batman 60 TV show? Yes, but this is a completely different one. This is Marvel's Egghead. Yeah, he made his first ever live action appearance. Except the only appearance in flashbacks. Why the heck this was, I have no idea. But I'm glad the fact they included him. Because he is so shoot Ant-Man, so why not? I mean, you have, in the previous one, we have Darian Cross, who was an enemy of Scott Lane in the comics. And he was also an old, old D-list Iron Man enemy. This film basically features a well-known Iron Man, the Ghost, who was a woman. Now, in the case of Lane, he had no problem with the fact it's portrayed by a woman because he created the character Ghost to be genderless. Yep, genderless. And she also has a connection to Janet Van Dyne and where she is. Yeah, apparently there was an ex and they explained in a flashback later in the movie that there was an explosion they were trying to do to so like recreate something and basically Elias Starr died along with basically his wife, but as for Ava, she got infected with particles of the microverse. Yep, and she has to go into the tank to sit, keep herself stabilized. And she has to steal stuff. And she worked briefly for freaking Hydra. Yeah, Hydra. Why not? But she technically is kind of the main villain in this movie. Now, because of the events of Captain America Civil War, Hank Pym is in house arrest. Yep, and he's supposed to have any contact with Hank Pym. Yep. Well, that was until he gets himself a dream, where he gets in contact with Jennifer Dine. 
Yep. So he uses a cell phone you keep hitting in the wall of his house to call him up. Like I call about his wife, and then all of a sudden they they have it where Hank just basically shrinks Scott. Oh yeah, and Scott apparently can't use his tech. Yeah, he's banned from using his tech. Oh yeah, here's the thing: his pro officer is Johnny Wu. Yes, a guy who's an agent of Shield in the comics, and yes, like in the movie, he's an FBI agent. For some reason, they made him his pro officer for some reason. I have no idea. But at least I give high praise to the fact they actually cast an Asian to play this character. Yes. Which makes Johnny Wu the first ever Asian character, well, a prominent Asian character from the comics, to be portrayed by an Asian. Kudos. And the Cortez actor will also appear later on in the year to play Dr. S- uh, Dr. Steven in Aquaman. Yeah, same actor. And this was basically, and of course, the following year, kind of the same thing too. One actor being in two different comic book movies coming out in, a sh- in the same year as each other. Yeah, that was Josh Brolin with Endgame and Deadpool 2. Yep. And so they explained that because of the fact, whole thing with Jen, of course, Hank kind of wrote the fact his wife had been dead for, for a long time. Well, that was no she kind of contact him. So they basically get materials to basically build device to go to this particular place though they also had to deal with Sonny Birch and of course the ghost along the way and try to avoid Johnny Wu the whole movie mm-hmm. oh yeah and I also love the fact that Peggy Scott Lang's ex-wife is going to be a much better character than she was in the last film like it's like she she, she was going to be more supportive of him yeah I mean they're good friends they're not going to get back together because well she's currently married and <laughs> yeah, so I'm not sh- now they have it a little bit later on where Hope meets Cassie. As far as I know, there's never been an explained reason of of when these two actually met. They just kind of just randomly met, or at least know each other. I didn't see it in the last movie. Yep. So yeah, so they eventually that's when they later uh when, when they go to visit Bill Foster, who is an old colleague of. Hank Pym's. Now that part was true. That part was true. The fact they actually knew each other and the fact they're colleagues. So in the comics, he was Hank Pym's lab assistant who became a superhero named Goliath. They do reference Goliath and they have it where Hope basically misinterprets basically growing size as a dick measuring contest. Yes. Where, yeah, Bill Foster says, oh yeah, I can go to 21 feet. Yeah, and Scott Lang says, I can go to 61 feet. It's like, really? How'd you accomplish that? <laughs> and this whole science stuff goes back and forth. And it helps like, okay, stop. Can we can we back to topic, please? <laughs> okay. Well, I thought this scene was so hilarious and I think anybody can basically tell. It's just a, just uh like like my thing is very like it's basically how it's a very adult term to explain this. Where this scene is basically Scott Lang and Bill Foster have a dick measure contest. That is simply what this scene is. And Hope told him to stop right away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it, it, it's actually quite funny. <laughs> yep. And so, they had this thing where both, because Hank Pym does not reveal himself to the authorities, because apparently he has banned tech for some reason. Well, that's because it's the Kobe Courts. Yep. Yeah, something wasn't explicitly explained, but at least it's explained for it. I like in the case of Supreme Restoration Act, where we don't really know what the heck the thing says. Aside from the fact that if you have an identity, you have the reg- if you have powers, you become property of the government, you have to register with, with the government. In the movies, it's kind of like supervision, and because, well, he acted against Ke- Iron Man, yeah, basically it's like his band, though he's able to use it later on. Mm-hmm. So I think it's a part, he gets something later on. Yep. Oh yeah. In the case they have it, and and when Johnny Wu, uh, when he's he asks Hank, he asks Scott Lang about Hank Pym, he says, "Oh, he hates my guts." And Bill Foster, the same thing. Oh, he he hates my guts. <laughs> like I hate his guts. Okay. Why the heck would they deny knowing like knowing he's booked him last? Yeah. In the case of Bill Foster, the fact that he had just spoken to him like less than five minutes prior. He said, oh, I haven't spoken to him in ten years. Despite the fact that you just spoke to him. Yeah, lines the FBI, why don't you? 
Yeah, and because of the fact that Hank Pym went giant size in Captain America Civil War, a lot of the time in the movie he's going freaking giant size. And 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 this all, it was a really funny scene. Hank Pym was like, when somehow they throw a Pez dispenser with Hello Kitty on it, they go big, and the guy on the motorcycle was chased, and it was like, oh, hello, kitty. And like, people were like, hello, kitty. <laughs> that was so funny. A giant Pez Hello Kitty, which I thought was quite hilarious. My guess is that that, that actually must belong to Cassie. Yeah. <laughs> which, fun fact for me, that's all the same name my, my sister. I actually spoke to her about it, and she loved the fact that, the, that Ant-Man's daughter's name is Cassie. <laughs> yep. I think, what else? Um, oh yeah, at one point they have Steinberg's group break into the security firm using her to use True Serum. He calls them and was like, yeah, it's really True Serum. And then the FBI shows up later on to supposedly arrest these guys. And then he basically, on the True Serum, confesses that he runs his restaurant terribly, confesses to all the crimes he's committed in the last, like, ten years. And we was probably thinking, though, okay, just put the cuffs on him and get him to stop talking, please. He's basically babbling about nonsense. I thought that was so funny. And of course, he's chasing him, kind of like, hey, Scott, get out of that suit right now and I'll arrest you. And then it's revealed, though, that, oh, yeah, <laughs> this was, was quite funny. The fact that that he was not in the suit, that was all basically just a stand in. And he goes visit a couple of times. Like, for, now, a lot of the time when you see he's on the monitor where he's actually in his apartment, it's basically a giant sized ant. Yeah, it's, it's a human sized ant. And he goes visit him and basically he's playing drums. He's like, okay. And eventually, like, after they feed the ghost the movie, he eventually takes out this bracelet which, uh, on the very day that, well, he's supposed to go off anyways. Yeah, eventually they have it where they go into the microverse. Well, actually, it's, it's Hank goes microverse, and he runs to his wife. He's so happy to see her. He makes up with her, takes her back, and because of the fact she wanted to take some microverse elements up with, so she gives some of her power to her to just to keep her somewhat stabilized. And then of course they had them disappear, like on the run. And of course, well, they still want to help us, so they want to get stuff in the microverse. So Scott goes to the microverse to gather this stuff, and then Infinity Wars Snap Kits kicks in. Where Hank, Jen, and Hope turn to dust. And of course, Scott knows nothing about this at all. And he remains trapped in the microverse for five years. Though for him, it's a few hours. He doesn't. This is not fall up to his end game. Yep. And as for, I should point out though, Jen, Hope's action as as the Wasp is purely fantastic. And then when you have, basically Scott sees you first. Hey, he has wings. Like he has blasts. Like hey, what did you give me? He's like, I did, but I gave it to her. Yep. In the case, Wasp, Wasp plays a, like, I love the fact they call this Ant-Man the Wasp because it makes sense because they're the, the primary character this movie. Mm -hmm. I even love it where at the end of the movie where it looked like, though, that Hope, Scott, and Cassie went to a a dry movie theater. And then you look around, and it's actually shrunk inside of a car, and they're watching a movie on, his, on Scott's smartphone. <laughs> Which I was so funny, but so cute. In the same way. Yeah. But it seems as though Cassie gets along great with Hope. And you're probably thinking, hmm, this is like my mom is not with him, my dad anymore. Maybe, maybe, maybe she can have a future stepmom for me. Who knows? But this film is fantastic. And it's a great follow up to the previous Ant Man film. I mean, this way, back, it does reel for some events with Captain America Civil War. It feels very much like a sequel to the original, the first Ant movie. It does follow what happened to him. Like, mostly at the Captain America Civil War. So chronologically, it's like a first Ant-Man film, Civil War, and then this film, and then Endgame. Yeah. This one was good. This film, a 9.5 out of 10. It's really good. Like, the ghost, basically. Like, it played with evil, but not really, no. Though I think her working with Hydra was kind of stupid. Like, in the comics, she basically was the, the ghost known as a corporate saboteur. Yeah. And the reason why Ghost did this was because he wanted to. He loves, like, his employee was a guy sabotaging companies. Now, and after, I even talked to Bob Layton about, now one thing I did about Blaine, aside from the fact that he loves 
the actor's portrayer, he loves the suit. Yeah, it's a great nod to how he's depicted in originally the Bob Layton version. He loves the fact that that it's partially inspired by his co- the costume he designed for the ghost. And I saw I actually showed him what the ghost current looks looks like in the comics, and he hates the current look. He thinks it looks awful, which I do agree. It's freaking terrible his current look. Yep. But not much else to say about this really good family friendly movie. There's some foul language in here, but it's minor at best. But it's a purified movie. And I even love the fact that Scott's crew get a chance to play some role in the movie. And, well, it's also nice to see Hank Pym in a suit. Yeah, first time you see Hank Pym wearing the Ant-Man costume in the movies. Yeah, it's quite something in the fact he puts on an Ant-Man helmet. And, and the way the microverse looks, it looks so freaking gorgeous. Love the special effects they have in this movie. And the fact they have Peyton Reed that directed the previous film. Yeah, he comes back to direct this movie, which, not bad idea. Yep. And it is something that this film only came out just three years after the last film did. Which, that's not bad. No, it's not. And the next film is supposed to come out in 2022. Okay. So I have to wait like three years for the sequel. But for some people... Yeah, four years, not that bad. It's not really a big problem with people. The fact we four years for a sequel. But, hey, at least the guy is still featured. Got featured the following year. I guess maybe a three-year break from the guy basically is okay because don't want to overexpose him because that would be kind of stupid. Mm-hmm. And the film itself, from what I can tell, did grow a little bit more than the last thing. I think it was like, like uh, 100 million more. Oh, yeah, they call it the Quantum Realm. Yeah. Now, the film itself grossed $622.7 million. Yep. Yeah, that's how much this film grossed. I think it was, uh, from what I can tell, I think it was exactly like $100, $100 million more than, than the last film. Yeah, which, Kelly's got to it for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's something though they have this film set during the events of Infinity War. Yeah, while well, that's going on, we have Ant Man basically dealing with that. And the fact that they turn to dust at the end of the movie, it is something though now a lot of people theorize how Ant Man got out of the realm. There was a theory around the realm that maybe Iron Man may have no like he may have the tech this uh some tech related to Hank Pym. Oh, yeah, and also I love the fact that Hank Pym can basically shrink the Billy Hughes' base operations. He turns into a freaking suitcase, puts it in his van, and just drives right off. And the paper Tim Tech is you frequent the whole movie. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's like we're still on the run, all because of Scott. Yep. But not much to say, movie. It's really good. Okay, so that's it for this particular review. My next thing I'm going to do is going to review a newest episode of One Piece along with New Chat and Manga. Yep. I'm also going to do another comic corner and another movie review. Which movie review am I going to do? Movie review on Captain Marvel. Yep. But these next few. Bye.